you are our greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time we started this. Pain isn't something we thought. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look power. status. Let's discuss. Hey guys, welcome to Vet to Vet podcast. Uh, new episode uh, about forever GI Bill. So if it's your first time listening, then thanks for coming. And it's a short reminder, Vet to Vet is a non-profit educational project dedicated to assist veterans with adjustment to civilian lifestyle and to provide assistance in obtaining your VA and other available benefits you have earned. So today we are talking about forever GI Bill or a new GI Bill uh, Act, uh, commonly known as uh, forever GI Bill, uh, the Heavy Colmery Veterans Educational Assistance Act of 2017 picked up its name due to its main provision, which eliminates the current 15-year use it or lose it constraint of the post-9-11 uh, GI Bill educational benefit. So this time limitation has been one of the uh, sticking points of the post-9-11 GI Bill with veterans and many veterans organizations since the implementation of the post-9-11 GI Bill back in August, August 2009. So while removing this feature is important, it's just one benefit change of many contained within the uh, new uh, bill, forever GI Bill. So let's let's go into the topic. Yeah. So here are 11 things you should know about the new GI Bill benefits. Number one, there's no longer an expiration date. Previously, veterans had to use their post 9-11 GI Bill within 15 years of, the, of their last 90-day period of active duty service. That requirement is going away. This portion of the new law will apply to anyone who left the military after January 1, 2013. It will also apply to spouses who are receiving education benefits through the, uh, the Marine Gunnery Sergeant John David Fry Scholarship for the family members of service members who have been killed in the line of duty since September 10th, 2001. Purple Heart recipients will get more benefits. The new GI Bill allows anyone who has received a Purple Heart on or after September 11th, 2001 to receive 100% of the benefits offered under the post 9-11 GI Bill, which include coverage of tuition costs at public schools in state rate for 36 months and a stipend for textbooks and housing. Previously, Purple Heart recipients were beholden to the same time and service qualifications for the GI Bill as any other service member. This meant that a Purple Heart recipient with out a service-connected disability who did not reach 36 months of a service of service were only eligible for a percentage of the benefits and not the full amount. Uh, Morawski, a national le legislative director for Military Order of the Purple Heart, said there have been 52,598 Purple Heart recipients who were wounded in action during post 9/11 conflicts though it's unclear how many would immediately benefit from this provision. An estimated 660 Purple Heart recipients each year over the next 10 years will be able to take advantage of the increased benefits. Quote, we think that anybody who has shed blood for this country has met the service requirement by virtue of this fact, Morsky said. Everybody sacrifices, everybody puts themselves in harm's way, but Purple Heart recipients are certainly among the service members who have sacrificed the most. This provision will go into effect in August 2018. So it's already in effect. Yes, sir. More, uh, number three, more people are eligible for Yellow Ribbon. The Yellow Ribbon program is a voluntary agreement between schools and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to split uh, school costs not covered by the GI Bill reducing or eliminating the amount students pay themselves. 
The Forever GI Bill will expand this eligibility for this program to surviving spouses or children of service members in August 2018 and active duty service members in August 2022. Previously, only veterans eligible for GI Bill benefits at the 100% level or their dependents using transferred benefits were eligible for Yellow Ribbon. Number four, there's some extra money, time for STEM degrees. Some college degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math fields take longer than four years to complete, which is why the new law authorizes an additional school year of GI funds on a first-come, first-served basis. Scholarships of up to 30,000 will be available for GI Bill users starting in August 2019. Only veterans or surviving family members of deceased veteran service members are eligible for this scholarship, not dependents using transferred benefits. Vets hurt by school shutdowns will, be, will get benefits back. A provision in the new GI Bill will restore benefits to victims of school closures. It has been a long time coming and for the staff at uh, Student Veterans of America. This provision will re retroactively apply to the GI Bill users whose schools have abruptly closed since January 2015 for credits earned at the shut shuttered institutions that did not transfer to the new schools. This will include the, the thousands of veteran students who are attending national for-profit chains like Corinthian College, ITT Tech, when they close in 2015 and 2016 respectively. It would also provide a semester's worth of reimbursement for GI Bill users affected by future school closures, as well as up to four months of a housing stipend. Number six, the VA will measure eligibility for benefits differently. Starting in August 2020, this bill changes the way the VA uses time in service to calculate eligibility. Previously, service members with at least 90 days but less than six months of active duty service would be eligible up to 40% of the GI Bill benefits. Under the new regulations, the same 90 days to six month window equals to 50% benefits. Service members with at least six months and, at, and less than 18 months of service will be eligible for 60%. This change will tend to benefit reservists more due to the nature of their service, according to the spokeswoman for the Senate Committee of Veterans Affairs. Number seven, reservists can count more of their service towards eligibility. So starting next August, or this coming August, Members of the National Guard and Reserve will be able to count time spent receiving medical care or recovering from injuries received while on active duty towards their GI Bill eligibility. This will apply to all who have been active since 9-11. The Forever GI Bill also allows individuals who lost their Reserve Educational Assistance Program when the program ended in 2015 to credit their previous service towards their eligibility for the post-9-11 GI Bill. The housing stipend will decrease slightly. The government will pay for the expansions represented in the Forever GI Bill through a 1% decrease in housing stipend over the next five years. This will bring veterans housing stipend on par with what active duty service members receive at the E5 with, uh, de with dependence rate. Veterans on the GI Bill currently receive a slightly higher housing allowance rate than active duty E5s with dependents. This change will take effect on January 1st, 2018 and will only apply to service members who enroll in GI benefits after that date. No one currently receiving a housing stipend from the VA will see a reduction in benefits. On a month-to-month -month basis, they would, see, they would never see less money, said the SBA's Hubbard, explaining that the 1% reduction will come off of the total the VA would have spent over the five years. Starting in August 2018, housing stipends previously calculated based on zip code of a student's school will be based on where the student takes the most classes. Also in August 2018, reservists will continue to receive their monthly housing allowance under the GI Bill on a prorated rate for any months during which they are activated, preventing them from losing a whole month's worth of funds. Number nine, benefits can get transferred after death. A provision of the new GI Bill offers more flexibility with the transfer and distribution of benefits in case of death. 
If a dependent who received transfer benefits dies before using all their benefits, this provision gives the service member or veteran the ability to transfer remaining benefits to another dependent. This will go into effect August 2018 and apply to all deaths since 2009. This provision also gives dependents of deceased vet service members the ability to make changes to their deceased loved ones' transferred benefits. A senior coordinator of education support services for the nonprofit Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors explains that currently only a service member has the authority to make changes to the benefits they'd like to transfer. So if a service member dies after transferring 35 months of benefits to one child and one month of benefits to another, for example, the family would not be able to make future changes to the GI Bill's distribution amongst the service uh, family members' uh, dependents. Number 10, surviving family members will get more money but less time. Surviving spouses and children of service members who are receiving benefits through the Survivor and Dependents Education Assistance Program will see their monthly education stipend increase by $200. There is a downside, however, though the same program has previously provided 45 months of education benefits, that will be decreased to 36 months in August 2018 to bring in line with the provision of the GI Bill. Number 11, school certifying, certifying officials must be trained. Individuals who certify veteran student enrollment at schools with more than 20 veteran students will be required to undergo, tr undergo training. Previous training was not mandatory. So guys, let's see pretty much about the uh, new uh, forever GI Bill Act. Yeah, and just keep remember, uh, remember that it's mainly for the new guys uh and it's forever and you could kind of transfer the benefits a little bit more better but other than that that's the main thing is that there isn't that 15 year use it or lose it mm -hmm. so do you have any book um great movie you would recommend rick and morty there's a new rick and morty book uh the universe i think it's called the universe according to Rick. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny. It's nothing but quotes, though. So it's not really a book. That's fun. And um, quote or words of wisdom of the day? They've got us surrounded again, the poor bastards. Uh, said by um, Creighton Abrams on the Battle of the Bulge. So that's it, folks. Thank you for listening. Until next time, over and out. Thank you.